Okay, so here, here are the two cups side by side. This one right here is the first one I made. And um, the reason I wasn't happy with it is because I kind of went too overboard on the uh, brush strokes for the patina. And then I covered up my peekaboos. So um, you can barely see the roses underneath. Also, my roses were very thin and I didn't do um, vinyl on top um, because it was just so busy. So that's what I didn't like about this one. I love the colors. I love the brush strokes, all of it. I just wasn't super happy about the way I did the, the peekaboo. So this one, I used the exact same technique except I used bigger roses and when I did my patinas, I painted over the stencil, then pulled it up. Compared to this one, I pulled up my stencil first and then painted over. So there you go. So these are my two patinas. This is the one I wasn't happy with. This one is the one I just did the video on. If you um, like the videos I'm posting, I would love for you to subscribe and then there's a bell that you can click for notifications and you can see when I upload my next videos. I try to upload, well, I've been doing only one every two week, weeks. This is only my fourth video. Um, summer's rolling around, so I'll be able to do more videos. Um, if I use bright tone, it takes me a little bit longer to finish a cup. If I use epoxy, I can finish them pretty quickly. So um, thank you for watching. Okay, so there are a few steps to making this tumbler, so I'm gonna try not to make this video too long. Um, the first step is you wanna have a template for the peekaboo area. So peekaboo is when you have glitter or a color underneath, and then um, you have a different design or color or glitter on top, and so you can see the bottom color through the top color. So to create my peekaboo, I wanted roses, and so I went onto Cricut Design Space and I found a rose that I could create into my peekaboo templates. And what I wanted to do is that little black spot you're seeing that the, I did a, I did a um, offset, and I think I sized my offset to point. 033, let's see what I type in here. I usually do point zero. okay, so I did point one zero. And then I'm going to center the rose on top of the offset and then I'm going to clip it or slice it um, because I don't want the inside of the petals um, as vinyl to put over the top of my peekaboo. I actually want just the outline. So here I created my black or the dark gray color right there for my peekaboo template. I'm gonna cut that into um, stencil vinyl. And then the outline for the rose, that's gonna go over my tumbler after my first coat of epoxy, after I decorate it with the brush strokes and um, it's how I want it. So here I am cutting the template from stencil vinyl using my Cricut machine and then I'm gonna apply the stencil rose patterns all around my tumbler in kind of a sporadic order, wherever I think they look good. And then I'll start painting my patina paints over the top of the stencil. So you wanna leave your stencil on the vinyl the whole time you are painting your paints. I think I was just covered up my speaker, hopefully not. Okay, so here are my stencils. And I think I only used four of them, but I always, <laughs> I always do way too many. And so in my little vinyl craft bins, I have tons and tons and tons of excess vinyls and fabrics and all kinds of things that I just, you know, you never know. You never know how much you're gonna wanna use. So I always, it, I always do way too, too much, but that's okay. I am using a gloss um, paint to spray over the top of the tumbler after I apply the vinyl peekaboo decals. And here you're gonna see me start just spreading the paint. This is a patina paint I got from Amazon. I'll link that, link that below. And then those other patinas I also got from Amazon. This first one um, is a paste, pasty substance and the other ones are very liquidy. So um, you just, I just put those random all over my paper and because I just like to pick and choose as, you know, as I need, as I go, 
um, depending on what colors I need more of or less of. And I always include a white because you can always let it dry and then cover, do some white strokes if you want to, if you have like too much color or you wanna add a bold color on top, the white is super helpful. So I'm using chip brushes, the skinny chip brushes. I also got those from Amazon. I, I get a lot of my products from Amazon. I'm taking my chip brush and I'm just randomly bottom to top, top to bottom, middle, whatever, with a very, very light hand. So the tips of those uneven bristles just barely hit the tumbler. I am just placing those um, paint colors where, wherever I see fit. So I started with the dark blue, I'm moving into the light, and then I'm gonna switch brushes because I don't wanna contaminate those colors with another brush. And I think I switch. Let's see if I switch brushes. I'm pretty sure I did. Yep. Um, and then I'm gonna go into the other colors and you always wanna use a clean brush when you're dipping into the white because otherwise it's just gonna be like a muddy, dark mess. So I'll go ahead and stop talking and you can just watch the process. So once I was happy with the combination of the brush strokes, the paint colors, and the overall look of the tumbler so far, I decided to add some little extra um, sparkles. So I used two glitter colors, the dark bronze latte from the Glitter Guy, and then um, the gold one is from Glitter Heart Co. And I'll link the colors of everything I use in the description box below. And I'm going to just apply the Tacket right over those two colored areas on my tumbler. So wherever there's a bronze, not, not in all the places, just randomly so that some of the paint is showing and then in some areas um, the glitter is um, on top of the paint. So uh, you have to dry tack it. You want it just to be a little bit tacky before you apply your glitters. And then I'm gonna start with a dark latte color and um, apply that in a random streaks and the way I applied the tacket with the chip brush is exactly the same method that I used when I actually applied the paints. So just a really light hand, just barely dusting the tacket onto the tumbler and then just randomly sprinkling the glitters over the top of those matching colors of paint and then brush off the excess. So I'm gonna go around and do that again with the gold right over the top of random sections of the gold color, sprinkle the glitters, and then you'll see me lift up the vinyl, um, the vinyl stencil decals. Okay, so this is the fun part where you get to reveal the undercolor to see what it looks like when it peeks through, hence the name peekaboo. <laughs> and so I'm gonna lift up all those little vinyl stencil pieces 
and um, give it a good coat with um, to seal all the glitter in and make sure everything stays in place. I'm gonna spray it once with Krylon clear gloss and then I'm gonna go over it with one um, thin coat of uh, quick coat just to make sure all those glitters stay in place and they don't shift too much. So I'm gonna go ahead and speed this up. Once you have your glitters sealed in with whatever method you prefer, it is time to apply a layer of epoxy. So I'm just gently, I'm not pressing too hard with my gloved finger. I don't want the glitters to shift. Um, so I'm just very gently layering a fairly decent thickness of epoxy over the top of this tumbler. And then I'm going to add and right where those rose peekaboo sections are, I'm gonna add in a very, very light gray shimmer with some mica powder, and then I'm gonna sprinkle some chunky light blue glitters just dead center right in the middle of those roses. So it's gonna add some sparkle, it's gonna shift the color of that blue just a little bit to soften it up, and then once I put the vinyl outline over the top after this epoxy dries it's going to look like the center of the rose is um, you know a little more dramatic than just a, a solid blue glittered rose poking through also i forgot to mention um <clears throat> the base blue glitter color that i have for the peekaboo that, I couldn't even tell you what colors I used. That is a stockpile of extra blue glitters that I've used in the past and they're just all mixed together and I just had to use my excess and so I thought I would just sprinkle it all over a tumbler and so that's what created that blue peekaboo base that you see. I also added just a little bit of diamonds from Glitter Heart Co. right into that um, silvery gray mica. Mix it really good and then you're gonna see me add it right in the center of those blue peekaboo roses and you're still gonna see the, the blue color but it's gonna be barely muted and the sparkle is gonna be insane. So it's gonna really draw your eye to that section and um, give it a, a special pop of color. So I'm just smoothing those in and this uh, epoxy will level itself out so you won't have little chunky sections in there. It'll just kind of level out and it's okay if some of that moves into the other color. You won't even notice it because the, the brown paint colors, the bronzies and the blues, um, they're really dark. So you won't even notice the gray shifting into those colors. And then I'm gonna sprinkle chunky bits of blue right in the center of those roses. This um, really light blue color is also from Glitter Heart Co. And it has, it's so light, it almost looks silver. It's, it's, it's stunning, it's a beautiful color. I just hit it with my torch lightly a couple passes. And this is a close up of what it looks like on the spinner with those beautiful glitters. Just wow, I am so happy with this cup. So happy. 
I'll, um, when I show the final cup, I'll show you the one that I did first months ago, and I wasn't super happy with that one. So when I made this tutorial, I made sure I fixed the mistakes that I did with the first one. So in the end, I'll show you both of those cups side by side so you can see what I changed. So now I'm just cleaning up the rim, scraping off the residue, the chunks of epoxy that got stuck inside, making sure I'm exposing just a little bit of that rim on top for the stainless. You always wanna make sure that your epoxy adheres to the stainless um, section of a tumbler, not just sticking to the paint because liquid can get down there and it can crack and you have all kinds of issues. So I'm cleaning that up and then I'm gonna uh, start applying my vinyl outlines that I cut on the Cricut machine. I did a deep bronze. I cut, like I said, I always do way too many because I never know what I want to use, but I chose the dark bronzy vinyl to overlay on top of those peekaboo portions. All right, so here they are. Here's the bronze vinyl all cut out, ready to place over the top of those peekaboo sections. I sometimes struggle lining those um, edges up perfectly so there's an easy fix to that especially with um, an image like this one you're gonna see me cut so when I when I lay that first rose down it's gonna lay a little bit crooked and there's gonna be parts that look a little loose or like they missed they missed the the curve and so I'm gonna just cut a little bit of the vinyl and then just replace it cutting off the excess just to match and you'll never even notice. So it's a really e easy fix with a, a vinyl overlay like this one. So I'm gonna do the first rows and then I'm gonna skip to the end where I do the final rows and then we'll do another coat of epoxy. This is where I was struggling with laying the vinyl. Usually when I lay vinyl, I will cut off the paper backing and then split it so that the center is showing through so I can line up my vinyl, make sure it's not crooked. That works really well when I'm using words um, or other images, but for this rose, and it could be because this tumbler is tapered. I actually don't even know where I got this tumbler. It was in a, a pile that I had from extra tumblers. It wasn't something I purchased. I got it in a box, like a subscription box from a company. I have, I really have no idea. All I know it's a 20 ounce tapered tumbler. So because it's ta tapered, I think I struggled with um, this method of applying the vinyl. So it's going to start to bunch up on the bottom and then around the edges. And so I'm gonna to have to use my little fancy cutting work to get it to line up. So do you see how the rose is hanging over the peekaboo? I I should have started, oh, I don't know, it was just a mess, but I managed to fix it in the end. And then what I learned is with the other roses, I had to just eyeball it without the paper backing and then cross my fingers, hoping that when I laid that center down, it was gonna lay properly and then just flatten it out and smooth it out as quickly as possible. And that actually worked. So um, lesson learned.
Now that all those vinyls are on, you are ready for another coat of sealer just to make sure your epoxy doesn't repel off of the vinyl. So I'm doing a quick coat one more time and then I'm going to apply a layer of epoxy and then for the final decal. I thought, I was thinking about maybe just leaving it without a decal, but I really wanted to say something about the rose and so I found a saying that I really love and um, so you'll see, you'll see what I put on here. So there's a quote that I really love. It's a flower does not think of competing with the flower next to it. It just blooms. And that's by Zen Shin. I think I'm Zen Shin. I don't know if I'm saying that name right. But I thought that was really long and I'm like, I wish there was something for just a rose. I did a search for rose quotes and I found a rose does not compete. It just blooms. And I thought that that was perfect. I know it's hard for people not to compete with one another and um, I, in as a teacher, I teach first grade, even in first grade my students are competing with each other and so I'm always talking about it, it doesn't matter who who's doing what, it doesn't matter what the person next to you is doing, all that matters is that you did better for yourself than you did yesterday or you set a goal and you improved just a little bit to make it better. The only person you have to compete with is yourself. And you know, that goes for sports too. My students are saying, well, what about sports? You know, we have to win and yes, but the skills that you're picking up, you're competing with just yourself. So the skills will get you better so that you can win a game, but you just need to make sure that your skills are better than what they were yesterday. So we're always talking about just competing with yourself and I think it's really important that you just don't compare yourself to anybody. So I am really happy with the way this tumbler turned out. The blue peeking through, the rose um, outline that I put over the top, the, the patina colors that I chose, the glitters, the quote, everything. I think it just turned out perfectly. Um, <laughs> you're gonna see me apply this quote to the tumbler. And I'm sure I have it on there just perfectly lined up. You see how I have my lid on there? So I put it on the opposite side of where you would drink because that's where I like to put my sayings and quotes and names. And when I laid this down, I mashed it up perfectly. And then when I went to apply it, I shifted it over to the right. So see that lid sitting right there on the table? That is a lid that just pops in. It fits this tumbler perfectly. And that's my backup plan. And I actually had to use my backup plan. So on this tumbler, that lid that twists on is gonna come off. <laughs> I'm going to replace it with the lid that just pops in because I cannot stand it when my quotes do not line up perfectly with the opposite side of where you drink. It's just a thing. I, ha I have to make sure it lines up. So there we go. That was the only thing that I was not happy with with this tumbler, but that was an easy fix. Here are those two cups again, side by side. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Please leave comments below and um, post if you post on social media, please tag me. I would love to see what you make. Thank you so much.